Hi, this is Kosher Granchad from the Ranchad Law Group and welcome to our weekly immigration show. Today we are gonna continue talking about hardship waivers and I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty here so you'll wanna stay tuned and watch till the end because we're gonna talk about completing the form, what you need to know, what pitfalls you need to avoid. So before we get started, make sure you smash that like button and and now let's get started. All right, so in completing the I-6018 form, I'm noticing mistakes that are being made when we have clients come into the office or potential clients come into the office where they've hired a notary or another attorney. And, and I wanna bring this up to you so you're aware of what you need to know in the filing of an I-6018 waiver application. So first of all, Let's talk about how do you qualify? For first of all, to qualify, you need to be a spouse of a US citizen or a spouse of a lawful permanent resident or have a parent who's a US citizen or a lawful permanent resident. Typically, an I-601A waiver is filed if you have accrued a lawful presence and that is what this waiver is designed for. for if you have a criminal issue, you'll want to make sure you consult with an immigration attorney. When completing the application, make sure you use black ink. You don't want to make the mistake of using red ink or using a highlighter because when they scan in the forms, it may not scan well. Of course, complete the application in its entirety. Make sure you sign the forms. You may think, well, duh, this is common sense. Well, you gotta make sure you sign the forms because that is another reason that USCIS commonly rejects the application. And additionally, you wanna make sure that you have the appropriate filing fees. Don't forget about the biometric fees. So you can see that information at the USCIS.gov website under the i 601 form section. Also, make sure you file at the correct location. Now this information changes, so you all you need to check this information before you file. One very important aspect of the hardship waiver application is demonstrating extreme hardship to your US citizen or lawful permanent resident spouse or US citizen or lawful permanent resident parent. So you need to provide all of the appropriate supporting documentation that supports the application. This is extremely extremely important because that is the foundation of your case demonstrating the extreme hardship. Now with that, what we also like to do is prepare a legal brief explaining all of the arguments as well. So those two go hand in hand, but at a, you wanna make sure you have the appropriate supporting documentation. You may also want to make sure that uh, you sign up for the G1145E notification so you receive e-notifications about your case. All right, so now we covered the basics. Let's charge on through and talk about the form itself. The first part of the form asks about information about the applicant. So here, this is pretty basic social security number if you have one, information about you. And some sticking points that are really important to note here are if uh, you have a criminal history. If you do, like uh, I mentioned earlier, make sure you contact an immigration lawyer because you may not be eligible for the waiver if you do. You'll also be entering your country of citizenship and how you entered if you enter with a visa or without a visa. So your immigration history is important as well. Next, on the form as well, it also asks about information about your immediate relative petition. So this is also really important because this is the basis of your case. So unfortunately, I've seen mistakes where the, an I-130 was never filed. So you have to have an I-130 petition filed, an appropriate immediate relative petition filed in order to file the I-601A. So the I-601A is after filing the immediate relative petition, the appropriate petition for your case. So this is really important to note because if you don't have this information, then your application could be denied or rejected. So make sure you put in the appropriate information about your petition. You'll also need to provide information about your qualifying relative. So this is the basis for your case. Without this information, you don't have a case. 
because that's the foundation of your case. So you have to provide the information about who your qualifying relative is because that is the basic requirement for the I-601A waiver. Next is the statement from the applicant. This is where you explain uh, the extreme hardship to your relative. In this situation, it's really important to, or in this part of the form, it's really important to demonstrate the extreme hardship, explaining medical, financial, psychological, country conditions. I go into this in depth on my other I-601A videos and case studies, so you'll want to check those out. But this is also really important, the statement. And we flesh this out in our cases through the legal brief because um, that space is just is not enough um, space there to provide, of course, all of the hardships. So this is extremely important to make sure that you get this right. Now, let's look at why applications are getting rejected. One of the reasons are not answering the question about whether or not you've been in removal proceedings. Another reason could be not providing the receipt number for your petition. So you want to make sure that you have the receipt number for your I-130 or uh, three, I-360 petition be, uh, because as I mentioned earlier, this is a prerequisite to filing the I-601A in most situations. And make sure you sign the application. If anything, that is probably one of the easiest things you can do. So I hope this video served you. Please subscribe, sign up for notifications so we can continue to keep you informed. And I just wanna thank you for tuning in to this video and being amazing for bettering yourself, bettering your family. And, and connect with us if you have questions or put it in the comments below. Bye for now.